r slash off my chest. Lopsided underscore platypus underscore says. I recently discovered my BFS likes. I recently discovered what my BF likes on social media. None of the girls look like me. They're all skinny and done up in Macoop. I have a big midsection and my arms are bigger. I hardly ever wear Macoop because I was really confident in my own skin. He never made me question how beautiful I was. Now that I've seen what he likes, I don't even want to have sex with him. I feel embarrassed and ugly. I told him it wrecked my confidence and how insecure it's made me. But the damage is done now. I dk how to bounce back from it. Ok brilliant 1872 says. My looks are nothing like what my hubby is into look wise and that's ok. He would even say growing up he'd rather die than marry a ginger, which I am. On our first date he made an innocent joke about hating Capricorns, not realizing at the time that I'm a Capricorn. He likes bigger chests I'm so flat it's not even funny, and despite all that I'm somehow the sexiest thing he's ever seen. It really is about the person. He wouldn't be with you without a reason or a few. Big for Mimoni says. My fiance is exactly what I like in a girl, but I've dated women who were nothing like what I would usually go for. The reality is that love is strange, and just because we have a type doesn't diminish the love we might feel for someone who isn't in our typical range. Don't get distracted, every day your man gets up, and chooses you opus. Porridge says. There's too much beauty to be, had in so many different styles slash kinds of people. So I don't have a type, it's not low standards though I swear. OK underscore channel 1682 says. Beautiful Instagram models are a fantasy. The same way pinup girls and playboy models are fantasy. The fantasy is beautiful, yes, but you're real, and he clearly knows that's better. Lopsided underscore platypus underscore says. But some of the girls are real girls. They're local girls. That's the part that stings. The models and fantasy girls are one thing, but the locals are another. R slash off my chest. Soja loving Saul says. I ruined my BFS 20 plus years friendship with his absolute best friend. Me, F23, my BF, M28, his friend, M27, and my ex-friend, F24. My BF and I met through our friends two years ago, we were set up, and hit it off immediately, and the rest was history. My then best friend, F24, and I met, when we were 10 over 11 years old, and were friends ever since. We grew distant in high school, but found our way back to each other after. Everything was fine, but she started acting weird, after I started dating my BF. Examples, she wanted us to sit down, to write rules and sign a contract, that if my BF and I were to ever break up we could not treat them any differently, and our friendships with them would not be affected. Another example, she cried and thanked us for being good friends, and dating for the sake of being a good friend to her. She said that she was so lucky to have friends, that were so good to her, that they were willing to pretend to like each other, so she didn't feel bad about setting us up. And that it didn't go well my boyfriend told her that was, frick, I'm ridiculous, to both. We distanced ourselves for a little bit, until it was his friend's birthday, her boyfriend, and we went to his day party. During that time I was pregnant, so I didn't drink, but we didn't tell anyone that I was. She saw that I didn't drink and immediately jumped to the conclusion I was pregnant. I denied it multiple times. I ended up having a miscarriage. And then a few months later, she asked me when I would start showing, and I told her I wasn't and ever pregnant. She kept messaging me about it, so I ignored her texts completely. A few days later she puts me and my BF into a group chat and sent us a photo of her holding a positive pregnancy test and said we were gonna be having babies together. I told her I wasn't pregnant and she told me to stop lying. Then we found out that the pregnancy test was a fake prank test from Amazon that was always going to be positive. She admitted to us 
that she did the prank to pull me out of my shell and wanted me to just admit that I was pregnant. That was my last straw. Also I'm sorry for the jumping back and forth, but between these incidents, she also tried other shit, like she hosted a party and invited only my exes and his exes, and invited us to a close friend's party hoping to see some drama being stirred but... My BF and I couldn't make it, since we had pre-existing plans, but we didn't know about her terrible plan until a few days after, when she asked me out for coffee, and told me that she was upset, that we didn't go to her party, because she thought it would have been funny to see everyone's reaction. Important info, while she was doing all of this, her BF, my BFS friend of 20 years, was participating and going along with all of it. The ex's party was being held at his place, the pregnancy test photos also had him posing with it. I sent her a text a few months ago saying I couldn't be a friend anymore. I made it really polite, and I told her that I felt like we grew apart and had nothing in common anymore. She took that really personal I guess, and tried starting a lot of drama in me and my BFS lives. For example, she reached out to my BFS old friends from high school and told them she was concerned about him being with me because she knew me for a very long time and I'm a terrible girlfriend and that she ended our friendship because I was a terrible person. She also reached out to his exes and told them that he told her he misses them and wants them to reach out and that he feels trapped with me. Where does her BF slash my BFS best friend of 20 years play in this? Well here's the best part. She told him about the guy who raped me when I was 16. And she told him that the guy raped me. Them being a perfect match in heaven, decided to host a small get together and invited my rapist, me and my boyfriend to her BFS place. When I saw him, my heart dropped and I'm a super anxious person, had an anxiety attack in the bathroom. I told my BFS friend about my history with that guy thinking he didn't know, but he did, because she told him, and he said to me has my buddy, he would never do anything like that. Even if he did, has changed. It was years ago, and he gives me rides all the time. I told my boyfriend we were leaving. And we left. We were only there for 10 minutes maximum. I told my boyfriend everything. His friend called him and texted him hundreds of times for months, and my boyfriend never answered any of the texts or messages until recently my boyfriend told him that until he apologized to me for what he said, they could not be friends. And he also said to him that, as long as he is still with his girlfriend, Aka my ex-friend, that he could not be a part of his life at all. Fast forward till now, my BFS friend and my ex-best friend has officially broken up. My BFS friend told him that they broke up because of me and that I was a toxic thing that kept coming up in their relationship. He also told my BF that they wouldn't be in this position if my BF never dated me in the first place. Now my boyfriend doesn't want to be his friend anymore, I can't help but feel really guilty about all of this, even though I know it's not completely my fault. But the narrative going around between their friend group and lifelong friends is that I made my boyfriend choose between me or his friend. I don't feel like I did that, but I can see why they feel this way. Also during the entire time this was happening, I told my boyfriend that if he wanted to hang out with them, he could but I wouldn't be there because it just wasn't good for me. I have never once told him that it was me or his friend, but I hope he never felt that way. Just wanted to get this. Huge underscore water underscore 4702 says. Holy crap the level of gaslighting here is on another level. Odd underscore fellow underscore 2112 says. If your BF agrees with everything you have written above, then I think he knows he made the right decision. Good people don't invite exes and own rapists to parties just to get a rise out of people. Realistic Vasibai says. You sound like the healthiest part of this story. No underscore interest 6092 says. Don't feel bad it's probably a blessing in disguise that he learns this of the guy now, rather than later in a more serious scenario. 
they are both unbelievably toxic and whether that guy just is someone who changes themselves for the person they are with or not there were a lot of situations that totally crossed the line. Glad you're both free of that toxicity. Raketep says. You did not ruin the friendship at all. Both BF best friend and his GF are drama magnets and acted with malicious intent. They tried to provoke you with inviting your apus to a party then tried to gaslight you. They are not worth feeling bad over. They reaped what they sowed. R slash off my chest. Warped solemnity says. A cult member is stalking me. My wife was sexually abused by her father countless times from the ages of 14 to 17. It took her some time, but after we escaped from the cult, we contacted the police. He was a leader in his church, and had access to little girls as young as age 8 alone, in his office. The police think it's extremely likely, that he had other victims. Now the my, uncle-in-law, who is a member of the cult has been stalking me, knows Myra did, and has made countless burner numbers harassing not only me, but my wife, his brother's victim. It's disgusting. We filed for a restraining order against him, the abuser, and some of the other cult leaders, and we also have a civil lawsuit against the abuser and the church. Despite this, he still keeps terrorizing my innocent wife. Luckily it appears that the police are taking it seriously, and once he's arrested, my father-in-law will likely die in prison. I feel like it's gross to harass someone in general, but harassing a sad victim and sending her disturbing graphical sexual texts it's a few steps too far. Anyone else deal with leaving a cult or a stalker situation? Thekable Rimpeached says. Man, this is, Frick Edition. I'm sorry you have to go through this. The Frick, er is even in the thread. Warped Solemnity says. Yep. I literally texted the guy as police told me to, and told him never to contact me again, or my wife on any platform, and showed him where the police have an open investigation. He still is protecting a pedophile, and harassing his own niece. It's really sick. Warped Solemnity says. I reported his comments, and we've taken screenshots like the police asked. This whole situation is crazy though. Selza666 says. Damn dude. Hopefully, they'll both get what's coming to them. They're just vile. Definitely can tell by their actions and words that they have the cult mentality and insecurity. Dark Haven which says. Make sure you record everything. If you don't have ring cameras, get them. If you don't have a dash cam, get them. Have a safe question with your wife, to where you ask her a simple question and she can give you an easy one word answer. Make it something simple, like him at the store, do you want me to pick up some watermelon? If she says yes, you know she's in trouble. If she says no, you're good. Unless this is something, that you two actually discuss on a regular basis and you're really into watermelon. That's all for this video thank you for watching please subscribe.